Zooarchaeology is the analysis of the animal remains recovered from archaeological sites. The bones of animals left behind by the people of the past can say a lot about the culture they came from and help us to build a picture of what their day-to-day -day lives might have looked like. Animals reserve a special place in our story and it's through rigorous analysis and clever applications of cutting-edge science that zooarchaeologists can work to piece together that story for all of human history. Well, if we think about animals and people, we have all kinds of different relationships with animals. So you, some of you will have pets and uh, dogs and cats and birds, and that's companionship. And so that might have changed over time. So animals today that we think of as companions like dogs um, could have been eaten in the past. And in fact, in some of the sites that I've worked at in Europe, we find an, uh, dog remains in sites and they were using them for their furs or pelts. Zoo archaeology begins with the simple questions. What were people eating? Where did it come from? And how did they get it? And then what can these animals say about the camp or settlement where they were found? Or about their environment? For instance, the way carcasses were prepared, portioned up and discarded can tell us about how food was shared and therefore about people's social structure. So we can look at companionship, we can look at secondary products, so things like furs, but also um, milk and other products that animals produce. Um, we can look at when did people really shift from hunting animals, which happened for thousands of years in the past, to actually starting to domesticate them. And so suddenly, instead of just hunting them for their meat, they started penning them or moving about in the landscape with them. So we can look at that. Um, we can look at um, ornaments, so shells, because don't forget, we, our invertebrates are animals as well. So uh, use of shells or teeth, um, how people use those to present information about themselves, like identity. So that might be a way of telling somebody else that, well, for example, that I'm married because I have a ring on my finger. And um, people used animal products to indicate in information about themselves. And then finally, of course, diet. So um, what we eat and people eat all kinds of different animals and we can if there's some changes in time over what they suddenly started to eat and uh, maybe how that changed we can start asking why why did people suddenly move from eating this kind of animal to these sorts of animals so Climate is a big thing um, and we can actually work that out from the kinds of species that were present if that shifted over time. But then we can look at things like their teeth and we can work out from using uh, chemistry, so isotope chemistry, we can look and see whether it was particularly wet during a period of time or if it dried. And so there's all this interesting information locked into animal remains. But the further back in time you go, the more zooarchaeologists rely on innovative use of new technologies um, and new techniques. In recent years, application of 3D imaging has been used to assess whether the remains of animals alive in the same age as our pre-human ancestors were marked by the claws and fangs of natural predators or by early cutting tools. Analysis of ancient DNA has linked modern domesticates back to their earliest origins, while comparison of the isotopic ratios of bone carbon has facilitated the search for the first grain-fed animals. So we've got our standard technology, uh, things like isotopes. So looking at the chemistry of teeth to work out, was it, um, did these animals live during a wetter period of time or a drier period of time? Uh, did the vegetation shift? Uh, and we can tell that from the chemistry. In Australia, zooarchaeologists have partnered with our country's traditional owners to investigate what the proliferation of marine animal remains into the Red Centre says about the 
scale of past trade relations and the deep history of connectedness between the nation's many communities. Likewise, changes in diet have been used to trace how people and animals are adapted to the drastic changes in climate and their environment across Australia's long history. Well, I, as a zooarchaeologist, would say that it's, it's very important to study animal bones and partly it's because it provides a window of information that we can't get at through other, other techniques. So um, we know about uh, stone tools, for example, very, very um, important aspect in Australian archaeology because they preserve well. So bones, on the other hand, they tend to not preserve as well um, in hot environments or environments that switch between hot and cold or wet and dry. And so for a lot of Australia, that presents a bit of an issue. But it, it has to be said that we find a lot more information if we can combine that, um, those different types of evidence. So stone tools with bones, with shellfish, with uh, plant remains and, and other materials, we can get a more of a complete picture. Zooarchaeology helps us to reconstruct how humans and their societies have been changed by animals and how these animals have changed in turn. With innovative science and the spirit of collaboration, zooarchaeologists are piecing together the story of how the earliest humans took their first steps towards the kinds of close bonds that people grow and share with animals all over the world every day. Thank you.